What's it thinking, Colonel? It's afraid. It's afraid! I've said it once and I'll say it again. I cannot emphasize enough how unimpressive and utterly mediocre the elite of Irish society are. Case in point, Helen McEntee. She's the daughter of a TD and former minister. She worked as his assistant in Leinster House for years. She has been a TD herself for over a decade. She has been Minister of State for Mental Health and Older People, Minister of State for European Affairs, and is currently the Minister for Justice. By all accounts, she should be one of the most astute political minds this country has to offer. But time after time after time, when Ben Scanlon of Gript approaches her with a mildly challenging question, or even just asks for specific details of the legislation she proposes, all I hear is... 90% of the time I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. So let's get to her latest masterclass. Now most people are rightly focusing on her statement, saying pretty much that incitement to violence is legal in Ireland. It isn't. But a lot of people are missing out on the first part of her answer that was far more revealing about what the establishment thinks of Irish sovereignty, Irish individualism, and how comfortable they are in taking away your rights. Let's break this down. Ben starts by asking her about the ambiguity and vagueness of not defining hatred in a hate speech bill, and how a Green TD recently said that it would be left up to the courts to decide on each individual case whether something was hateful. She then makes a truly stunning admission about how willing she is to strip all Irish citizens of their most fundamental human rights. Listen to this. Firstly, on this legislation, this is an important programme for government commitment. Um, as Minister for Justice, I will always listen to the Gardaí and what they are telling me right now is that we do not have adequate legislation to deal with hate crime and to deal with incitement to hatred. So. Right there, Helen McEntee has just said that her main motivating factor behind implementing this bill is that it would make the Guardi's job of policing mean words just a little easier. That's right, she says that the guards cannot police wrong think as effectively as they would like. So that means, I'm sorry people of Ireland, you're going to have to get one of the most authoritarian hate speech bills ever put to paper in the Western world and have the rights of every single citizen drastically reduced. She even says, I will always listen to the guards. As Minister for Justice, I will always listen to the Gardaí. Oh, will you? Well, here's a radical idea, Helen. How about when deciding what people's fundamental human rights should be, your primary port of call shouldn't be the guards, aka the enforcement arm of the state. You know, the people who without a moment's hesitation enforce laws in just the last five years that lock people in their homes, force them into unemployment, bankrupted businesses, ruined their children's education and social development, denied life-saving medical care, and forced people to say goodbye to their loved ones through a fucking iPad while they died alone, just to name a few things the guards are more than happy to do to the Irish people. How about instead of this, when deciding how to change what the most core fundamental human rights of the Irish people should be, well maybe you could actually listen to the fucking people you're supposed to represent. The people of this country who are going to have their rights taken away. The people who according to this legislation can be jailed for five years for just possessing and not even sharing material that is deemed hateful in a legislation that doesn't even define hate. Will you listen to what these people are telling you? Of course not. Because that's not what politics in this day and age is about. Politics today is a collection of out of touch, over educated, bought and sold elitists who see their job as not representing the public will, but instead their job is propagandizing and legislating every single aspect of your life so the public will conform by force if necessary to the will of the elite. Also notice how when talking about the legislation she cleverly uses manipulative language in her answers to misrepresent the impact and intention of this bill. The bill is called the Incitement to Hatred and Hate Offences Bill. But it's referred to by everyone as the hate speech bill, because that's what it is. It criminalises hate speech. Ben even refers to it as that in his question. On the hate speech bill, Green Party TD Patrick Costello said that it will be up to juries in the courts to decide whether a statement qualifies as hate. But in her answer, she cleverly never says hate speech. She always says hate crime. We do not have adequate legislation to deal with hate crime and to deal with incitement to hatred. So we are the last country in Europe to have hate crime legislation. We are the last country in Europe to update our incitement legislation. As I said, we are the only country to not have hate crime and hate uh, incitement to hatred legislation. No. She does this because it's technically correct because the bill itself makes hate speech a crime. 
so she can refer to it as a hate crime bill and not the much more controversial sounding hate speech bill. She nearly even slips up and says hate speech instead of hate crime, but just barely catches herself in time. As I said, we are the only country to not have hate crime. Sorry, say that one more time. Of hate crime. I will give you that one, Helen. We definitely are the only country in Europe without a hate crime legislation. Clearly the order has gone out from government not to say hate speech in public because it's too loaded a term and it accurately makes people realise their freedom of speech is being taken away by this bill. In her answer, McEntee also plays into one of the most pervasive and I think worst elements of the Irish psyche, and that is our inferiority complex. On two occasions in less than one minute, she says that the country is the only one in Europe without a hate crime legislation, and also that other countries don't define hate. We are the last country in Europe to have hate crime legislation. We are the last country in Europe to update our incitement legislation. Said we are the only country to not have hate crime and hate uh, incitement to hatred legislation. No other member state defines hate. No other member state defines the word that they use where they replace it with a different word other than hate. And the sky has not fallen down. So This embodies the toxic, sure why should we be any different mentality that permeates through so much of Irish society. When she says we're the only country in Europe without an updated hate crime legislation, every Irish person's answer should be, so fucking what? We should take the lesson we all got from our mothers as children of, if everyone else put their hand in the fire, would you? And not blindly follow everyone else. We should be proud and embrace our unique identity. I mean, we didn't fight and suffer for hundreds of years of oppression just to conform and blindly follow the crowd now. We fought to be a sovereign nation with a unique identity and the right to self-determination. But the elite of today would make you believe that your own sovereignty and unique identity is a form of backwards nationalistic selfishness of a bygone era and you'd be better served falling in line and doing what your betters in Europe tell you. She then goes on to say that the sky hasn't fallen because other countries haven't defined hate in their hate speech legislation, so there's nothing to be worried about. We'll just be like the rest of Europe. Said we are the only country to not have hate crime and hate uh, incitement to hatred legislation. No other member state defines hate. No other member state defines the word that they use where they replace it with a different word other than hate. And the sky has not fallen down. So, Well, Helen, maybe I don't want to be like the rest of Europe. Maybe I don't want to be like England where a man was recently thrown in jail for two years for having stickers that said horrifying statements like, it's okay to be white. Maybe I don't want to be like Scotland who can now throw comedians in jail for jokes and try to imprison a man for training his pug to raise its paw. Maybe I don't want to be like the Netherlands where the leader of the biggest party in the country was put on trial and convicted of hate speech for asking a crowd whether they wanted more or less Moroccan immigration. Maybe I don't want to be like Germany whose 2018 hate speech legislation forces social media companies to remove posts even as mild as insulting public office or members of government or even simple parody. Maybe Ireland should not try to follow the UK to a place where it puts the authoritarian Putin regime to shame in its destruction of free speech. In Russia last year, 400 people were arrested for things that they said on social media. 400 people in Russia. Obviously, this country is very different. How many people do you think were arrested in Britain for things they said on social media last year? Go on. Take a guess. I have no idea. 3,300. Really? Arrested for what they'd said on social media? Yeah. Maybe, and I know this is a wild thought, so bear with me. We could be our own unique sovereign country that is an oasis of freedom, a shining city on a hill in this increasingly authoritarian world where we don't just jail and outlaw dissent, but instead we solve our problems through the free exchange of ideas and give people the freedom to say controversial and offensive things because a society in which your most deeply held beliefs can be questioned or even mocked is the only one worth living in. At the start of this video I talked about how unimpressive our elites are. And I can't hit on that point hard enough because if you're fighting for change, this is your opposition. This is the best they can do. That doesn't mean the fight won't be hard because having the entirety of media, politics and academia against you will make any fight for change an uphill battle. But to be blackpilled is to think that these people are unbeatable. And if recent events are any indicator, and I think they are, it's a battle they're already slowly losing.